We will now move to the special ceremony in honor of Black History Month. Without objection, we will move to file item six, ACR 155, for the purpose of third reading. Mr. Gibson will open on behalf of Dr. Weber. Mr. Gibson, are you ready to proceed on this item? The clerk will read ACR 155. Assembly Concurrent Resolution 155 by Assemblyman Weber and others relative to Black History Month. Mr. Gibson, you may open on the measure. Madam Speaker and members. Good morning, Madam Speaker and members. I rise as a proud co-author of AC 155, recognizing February 20th as Black History Month. Black history is American history <clears throat> and should be remembered as such. The countless contributions African Americans have made to our nation um, embodies a statewide, a state ray of disciplines from science, technology, academia, to government and social leadership. This month, more than ever, let us celebrate these accomplishments and individuals while acknowledging their perseverance through the dark times in American's history. Their efforts opened doors for all African Americans. <clears throat> However, their fight does not end until di discrimination they face is also a thing of the past. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. led the protests over the Pettus Bridge because the fight was for voting rights was in Selma. Rosa Parks started a movement by refusing to give up her seat because the fight was in Montgomery, Alabama. Dr. Shirley Weber, who fought a change for a change of use of force standards, the fight is here. Autumn Burke, who made child poverty her issue because the fight is here. Mr. Kevin McCarty, who worked on early childhood education because the fight is here. These members, all along with my colleagues, are fighting to carry on legislation and also a legacy because the fight is here. I encourage you to please join me in recognizing Black History Month and commit yourselves to the fight. Members, I respectfully ask for an I vote on ACR 155 because the fight is here. Thank you, Mr. Gibson. If there are any members who'd like to speak on the measure, please raise your microphones. Dr. Eggman, you are recognized at your desk. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker and members. Uh, today I rise on behalf of the Latino Caucus. But as I rise on behalf of the Latino Caucus, I think about intersectionality. Because as we look around this floor and in this chambers in California, we look like a blend of what is everything that is beautiful about California and the United States of America. I could stand here, members, as a member of the LGBT caucus, and I can talk about the strides we've made, but I can also talk about the challenges we face when we know that LGBT, especially uh, people of color, brown and black, face greater risks of murder, of rape, of poverty than any other group. I could stand here on behalf of the Women's Caucus and speak about historically how it has been black and brown women that have rallied behind the efforts, oftentimes in silence. We can think about people like Rosa Parks. We can think about people like Dolores Huerta. We can think about people like Shirley Chisholm. We can think about in my own community, a Patricia Hatton, an OBGYN clinician who has been working with black and brown people her entire life. But today I stand on behalf of the Latino Caucus. And I think about where we are still, we've made huge strides, often behind the scenes, a lot of times in front of the scenes. And I think about the issues, again, of intersectionality. When we think about environmental justice, and we know that black and brown people live in areas where pollution is higher. We know that black and brown people live in areas where they have less access to water. We know that black and brown people often live in zip codes where they die sooner than their colleagues a lot of this is not defined by socioeconomic, but often just on issues around race. So as we stand to celebrate Black History Month, we stand for the success that has occurred, the progress that has been made, the, the, the path forward that we continue to strive, and we know that we fight those fights best when we join arms with those who face the same 
uh, situations that we face when we stand with our LGBT brothers and sisters, our Latino brothers and sisters, the women that have always helped carry the water as well as gone to the well to get it and to serve it to those that were thirsty. We stand, all of us, together side by side because we know when we are together, members, when we stop tearing each other apart and find ways to lift each other up, that we all stand tall as we stand on the shoulders of others and we lay the path for others to continue the path that we will help lay. On behalf of the Latino Caucus, I ask for an I vote on ACR 155. Thank you, Dr. Eggman. Mr. Chu, you are recognized at your desk. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Colleagues, I also rise on behalf of the API Legislative Caucus in support of ACR 155. Every February, we reflect and recognize the significance of our African-American communities, the legacy, the struggles, the challenges. Uh, but like our colleague from Stockton, uh, many of us also think about the intersectionality of these issues. One of my favorite events in my district during this month is a celebration of Black History Month with the Chinese Lunar New Year. And it's not just a celebration of culture. It's not just a celebration of social communities. It's a recognition that before the Chinese Exclusion Act and the Japanese American internment, there was slavery, there were Jim Crow laws. The fact that our struggles are interlinked, the fact that the triumphs of our communities are reflected uh, in the histories that we're talking about. I would not be here in California, but for an organization in San Francisco rooted in the African American community that decided to take in a law student uh, some 25 years ago, an organization where I worked as a civil rights attorney. Those of us that represent diversity on this body, we would not be here but for the civil rights movement, but for the civil rights fight led by our African American leaders. And we not only are commemorating history, but we are recommitting ourselves to the present fight and the future fight for equality, for ensuring that we have economic opportunity for all, health care for all, education for all, and a criminal justice system that works for all. So with that, on behalf of our API Legislative Caucus, I strongly ask for your support of ACR 155. Thank you, Mr. Chu. Ms. Waldron, you are recognized at your desk. Thank you, Madam Speaker and members. As leader of the Assembly Republican Caucus, I rise in strong support of ACR 155, honoring Black History Month. The story, uh, remarkable individuals and countless contributions to our society and to civil rights by the African American community are so numerous and have positively impacted our nation. In fact, they are too numerous to, to mention all here. It's important that we dedicate the month of February each year to studying, recognizing, and celebrating black history in California and across the United States. I thank the author for bringing forward this important resolution and urge an I vote on this ACR. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Waldron. Seeing and hearing no further debate on this measure, Dr. Weber, you may close. Madam Speaker and members, um, I wanna thank all of you for um, celebrating this particular ACR with these statements by the various caucuses concerning what this means to you and what it means to all of us. You know, it's been uh, eight years since I began discussing black history on the floor of this house. And I began to ask myself, after all of those years, what can I say to you today that is different? My friends often tease me because I've been a university professor and an educator for 48 years. And they say every time I open my mouth, I'm always teaching folks something. It's in my DNA. It's who I am. And so I find it difficult not to hopefully share something with you that's important. But as I think about the eight years that we have had a conversation here about black history, I think of all the things that we've talked about. I think the constant effort to say to you over and over how important history is in America, that it is the development of character. It is not just the giving of information, but it's really the shaping of the people who live in this country. And as a result of that, one's inclusion and one's exclusion from history speaks volumes for that individual and for their family and who they are in this country. And so when we look at that and we ask ourselves the constant question, why is this exclusion still there? 
we have to ask what was the intent in the first place for the exclusion. And as we look at it, then we can see the impact that it has on people's possibilities and opportunities and their children's possibility and opportunities. So we've had some many discussions concerning that. I've also asked you to wonder what the world would look like if we had known certain bits of history, if we had known about the, the um, hidden figures. Would we be so concerned about women being in STEM because women would probably own STEM and surely women of color would own STEM and own science. So the lack of that information or that misinformation of not believing that they have a right to have a role in mathematics and science has caused us to spend lots and lots of money of trying to tell women, you can do math, you can do science, when they should be the owners of it and they should be the ones driving it. And so we ask ourselves, what would the world look like if we had certain things that were there? And I even ask myself and my staff constantly when I'm talking about history, I went recently to see Harriet, the movie. And I came back and they said, what did you think about it? And as a historian, I began to talk about the accuracy of the movie. I thought it was accurate. I thought it was a good movie. And one of my members said to me, you know, they had, a, they had friends who didn't like Harriet. They said, why? I said, because whites had a role in it and they thought it was not supposed to be about white people, but about black people. And I once again had to remind them that the history of the Underground Railroad was not just about black determination to be free, but it was also about the collaborators, the whites who could not stand the system and found ways to participate. And if they had known their history and had looked up a book like Without Sanctuary about lynching in this country, they would have seen pictures of white mothers and white children lynched alongside of black individuals because they were sympathizers. That whites sometimes roosted their families, their resources, simply because they could no longer stand in an unjust system. And if we knew that, that might motivate us somehow to look for other collaborators and cooperators and others to stand with us on, on the issues that are so unjust. That's why I appreciate so many of you on 392 because 85% meant that most of us who were not African Americans, who were not in those communities, saw the injustice and decided to stand. And so it becomes important when we talk about history that we have all of that. And so as I think about what am I gonna talk about today, about history, and then I had to remind myself what I told you last year. I live for the day when we don't have Black History Month when Black History Month is no more than a historical statement of what we used to do, that we once celebrated history for just a month. But look at us now in the state of California, that we have a curriculum that encompasses all of California, that really provides for us the necessary information that we need to grow and to develop. And I know that seems like a pie in the sky, but it's something that can happen and must happen in California. And so I think of that because I think of two bills that you will see, that you have seen. And I look at the conflict and the issues that are there in those bills that have now come about. And we really must ask ourselves very honestly, what is the first step we take? Obviously the first step we take is to basically look at our universities and say, are we preparing our teachers to educate our children so that they have the complete picture of history and not just a piece of it? And it takes time to do that but it never happens without the first step. And so my goal in terms of black history is having taught it now for 48 years as a university professor and a chair of a department and a national person dealing with black studies, is to work so that when we talk of history in California, when we talk of history in the United States, we're talking about all of us. And our children are empowered because they see not only the struggle of one group of people to be free, they understand the preciousness of freedom, and they also see themselves in the process of making it happen. It is a thing that is now time that we stop doing the celebration once a month of black history and Chicano history and whatever, that we stop doing that. That we mark this time and says there was a time when we used to do that, but today, this time, we do it right. I respectfully ask for your I vote on ACR 155. Thank you for that potent close, Dr. Weber. All debate having ceased, we will move to a vote on the measure.
The first roll call will be for co-authors on ACR 155. The clerk will open the roll. This is for co-authors. There are 72 co-authors added. We can take a vo voice vote on this item. All those in favor say aye. aye. All those opposed say nay. The ayes have it. The resolution is adopted. As is tradition for the California Legislative Black Caucus, today we shall recognize unsung heroes to mark Black History Month. In the intervening years since the 1960s, the quest for justice for African Americans and all Americans has continued. The California Legislative Black Caucus established the Unsung Hero Award in honor of Dr. King to recognize those who embody his philosophy and ideals. We continue this tradition with the stellar group of individuals that we honor today. I am appointing an escort committee to bring our honorees onto the floor for a special presentation. Members should retire to the rear of the chamber as I call your name. Assembly members Burke, Cooper, Gibson, Holden, Kamlogger, Jones Sawyer, McCarty, and Weber. You all may retire to the back of the chambers. I ask Speaker Anthony Rendon, Republican Leader Marie Waldron, and CLBC Caucus Chair Shirley Weber to move to the center aisle to receive our honorees. We are moving to the introduction of the Unsung Heroes for 2020. The clerk shall read. The honoree from the 62nd District is Cinder Eller Kimball. She is escorted by Assemblymember Burke. Cinder Eller Kimball has been a dedicated employee for the city of Inglewood for the past 25 years. She works directly for the Chief of Police as a Senior Community Affairs Homeless Liaison. Her duties include setting up neighborhood and business watch meetings, responding to and troubleshooting the concerns of Inglewood residents. Please welcome Cinder Eller Kimball. The honoree from the 9th District is Mr. Clifton West III. He is escorted by Assembly Member Cooper. Mr. Clifton West III is the son of Clifton West Jr. and Irene B. West, and is the oldest of four children. In 1968, he was the California and national champion in the mile run. In recent years, Mr. West has written a memoir to, to highlight some of the significant experiences from earlier in his life. It is titled, Of Life and Time. Please welcome Mr. Clifton West. The honoree from the 64th District is Jasmine Kanick. She is escorted by Assembly Member Gibson. Jasmine Kanick has committed her professional career to taking on uncomfortable and hard to discuss issues around race, politics, and society and tells it like it is. Jasmine is known for bringing attention to stories that, have, that would have gone underreported, overlooked, or otherwise ignored. Please welcome Jasmine Kanick.
The honorees from the 41st District are Reggie and Renee Webb. They are escorted by Assemblymember Holden. Reggie and Renee Webb are successful entrepreneurs, community advocates, and owner and operators of 16 McDonald's restaurants. Together, they've established the R Renee Webb Scholarship Fund. Renee was inducted into, into the Multiple Sclerosis Hall of Fame, and she raised $340,000 during her board service. Reggie's community service includes the University of Laverne and the Los Angeles Urban League. Please welcome Reggie and Renee Webb. The honoree from the 59th District is Dr. Sandra E. Cox. She is escorted by Assemblymember Joan Sawyer. Dr. Sandra E. Cox is currently the Executive Director of the Coalition of Mental Health Professionals. She was a teacher and school psychologist for the Los Angeles Unified School District. Dr. Cox received her under undergraduate degree from California State University, Los Angeles, and a master's and doctoral degree from the University of Southern California. She has done field work in child psychology, child and adult psychotherapy, and received specialized training in critical incident stress debriefing. Please welcome Dr. Sandra E. Cox. The honoree from the 7th District is Carl Pinkston. He is escorted by Assemblymember McCarty. In 2008, Carl Pinkston founded the Black Parallel School Board, a community organization working parallel to the Sacramento City Unified School District Board of Education to close the achievement gap and restore equity for black students. Please welcome Carl Pinkston. The honoree from the 54th District is Lena Cole Dennis. She is escorted by Assemblymember Camlogger. Lena Cole Dennis has collaborated with organizations from Watts Wilbrook to the West Adams and all across Los Angeles in support of her community. They include the Brotherhood Crusade, the Los Angeles City Commission on the Status of Women, the Urban League, and the NAACP Legal Defense Fund. Her focus on education and family care is reflected in the work with Great Beginnings for Black Babies, his sheltering arms, the Economic Development Union for Compton, and Head Start. She's also worked to foster and promote positive cultural images by promoting black arts and black film. She selflessly serves those in our communities. Please welcome Lena Cole Dennis.
The honoree from the 79th District is Dr. Rodney Hood. He is escorted by Assemblymember Weber. Dr. Rodney Hood is a board-certified physician of internal medicine and a leader in the field of health care in San Diego. He is the president of the San Diego National Medical Association affiliate and the Golden State Medical Association. He remains socially active with memberships in the Alpha Phi Alpha and Sigma Pi Phi Boulay fraternities. Dr. Hood is one of the first African Americans to receive a medical degree from the University of California San Diego School of Medicine. Please welcome Dr. Rodney Hood. On behalf of the members of the California Legislative Black Caucus, thank you for joining us for this special ceremony today. A memento is on your desks. It is the 1940 edition of the Negro Motorist Green Book. The Green Book was a lifeline and a lifesaver for so many travelers in the segregated South during a time where race and color mattered. Written by Victor H. Green, it guided African-American travelers to a plethora of accessible, ordinary things needed while traveling by listing hotels, taverns, garages, nightclubs, restaurants, service stations, automotive tourist homes, roadhouses, barber and beauty shops. While this list seems mundane, inclusion in the Green Book assured black people that they could safely approach utilize and patronize the businesses listed without fear for their personal safety or an abrupt refu refusal of service and or accommodation because of their race. We also encourage you to take a few moments to view the special exhibit on African American inventors on the first floor near the governor's office at your leisure. It will be on display through February 21st. This concludes our ceremony. As our honorees exit the chamber, please join me in another round of applause for our honorees.